record. And here goes that encoder, and you are good to go. Welcome to another episode of Tales from the Bar Side, my friends. Uh, I'm your host, Remy. This is my lovely co-host, Lauren. Hi! And back again, our good friend, Lindsay. Hi! I got both the trash pandas on with me tonight. That's what's hey. happening. Hey. <laughs> and Dave, as always, in the studio. Right, or, you know, I've, I've, I've decided I just call this the, uh, this is now the podcast Detroit Bunker. That's that's what I'm referring to. It really is. The yeah. Bunker. The Bunker. <laughs> best, best bunker I've ever hung out. I in. like right. that. I wasn't scared. Uh, I was just escorted to the bunker. Dave, I'm kind of I'm kind of jealous of your bunker because that looks like a pretty sweet bunker. Yeah, I would love to be in a bar I would love for a bunker. Right, right. Well, here, for the uh, I think you have I don't think you've ever. So here's the wide angle shot. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> it's perfect. That's my kind of bunker. So yeah, that's that's why it I feel different. like I've I've got the cred to sit on a t- sit on a show about bartenders <laughs> and drink mixing because I've got the cred. <laughs> you definitely you sure do. have the yes, indeed. You sure do. What's funny to me is your bar always looks different because every time I've seen it, I was hammered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's all the pretty bottles and all the pretty lights and the dude, yay! All right. <laughs> Actually, that's the, like that's every so time. Cool. Every time I run a show and there's like a guest that hasn't been on there before, the the I always get, dude. That's a great virtual background. Where'd you get it? I'm like, no, no, no. Watch it for two <laughs> seconds. The lights change. Let me. I'll reach behind and go. It's <laughs> a real thing, right? It's real. It's a real one. <laughs> Put That's it up on amazing. Google Images. <laughs> Somebody else can use it as their virtual background. Right. So, so what the hell are you guys oh, talking yeah. about tonight? So tonight, let's get right to it. Uh, we're going to talk about drama. Everybody loves, uh, no, no, not everybody loves drama, but if you work at a bar, you're used to drama. Like, somebody's always fucking somebody. Somebody Wait a else is always jealous. A highly sexually charged somebody. environment with alcohol leads to yep. drama. I know, weird, right? Watch my pearls. <laughs> and of course, weird. then there's always rumors flying around and jealousy. and <laughs> About who's banging who or who's not banging exactly. who. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk, we're going to tell some fun stories from, you know, past experiences and stuff like that. Have you guys ever sure, been sure. The, the subject of some major drama or been involved Always. in some major drama? <laughs> yeah, right. That's Somebody me. stabbed Forever. you in the back. <laughs> like, I can't help myself. I can't help myself. <laughs> um, basically, my the, worst thing victim. You, the worst thing you can do as a guy, in my opinion, is start dating somebody. Well, even girls too, it doesn't matter. But like start dating somebody and then break up with them and still work with them and then start seeing somebody else at the same place. Like multiple co-workers from the same place is just that's where that's where it all goes crazy, you know. People start fighting. So I'm not gonna say uh like what my drama is particular <laughs> because it's maybe still drama. No, no, put um, else's dirty laundry out there. That's what right. about. But I will say, at, uh, as a manager, I have experienced quite a few of those situations. Uh-huh. Um, some of them have even resulted in marriage. So, oh, yeah. you know, and, and I was obviously at their wedding and made sure that, you know, they had the best day ever. I was the one that found out that they were dating and I was like, honestly, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you guys a hard time. Just don't yeah. let it interfere with work. As long as it's not interfering, but I have had that. I have had plenty of interfering oh, wow. situations, but um, you know, a lot of them have turned out pretty good. So, it's I know a lot of kids that came from relationships that started in bars and restaurants. You know, people that got together, and sure. created a family, and got married, or had kids, or or whatever. But I'm talking about like the the dirty stuff, like the low down. The manager was dating one of the bartenders one of the female bartenders and then started sleeping with another one of the female bartenders oh see that's the thing is you can't you can't double up like that he was doubling up and like (laughs) one of them one of them is still his girlfriend i believe to this i don't know like i'm pretty sure like they lasted but uh yeah it's like totally sleeping around with the other one and then of course it came out because nobody can keep their mouth shut you know you're gonna find out and uh, they didn't work next to each other or close to each other, but they eventually found out, and there was like a big blow up and lots of words of and course. stuff like that. And yep, but uh, he made his choice. He stuck, you know. He uh, obviously uh, apologized to the the girlfriend, 
you know, maybe it'll never happen again and stuff. And, I'm, uh, I'm not sorry I did it. I'm just sorry I got caught. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> on his merry way. And on exactly. his merry way. <laughs> We're both like, yep. Yep, been there, done that. Uh, it's and just... You see right. it happen almost everywhere you work at, though. Like, like there's oh, yeah, always... that's, not, that's not exclusively a bar thing. Right. It's like, you know, somebody eventually is going to be, like, exposed to somebody else that they find attractive, uh, you know, whether it's physically or emotionally or whatever. Like, it just happens. Sure. Yep. So, well, we've I long see... had we've long had this con We've long had this conversation. Bob and I have talked about this, like, for 20 years. This has been an off and on topic of conversation. The concept of work hot. Yes. Right. Like, like someone, yeah. someone that it, like you might think is like a six if you ran into them in a bar, but like after you work with them for a while, you're like, ooh, gee, that's a nugget. <laughs> well, because they're you get to know their personality right. a little bit more and you understand how witty they are or exactly. how funny they are. Right. It's like they, there's more to them than just what they look they like. Hey, up I'm there. I'm all in favor of the concept. I I am for damn sure always play the long game. I, I am not <laughs> Yeah, Dave. <laughs> Listen, that scale works in reverse. Yeah, I was gonna say no, 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 no. It, don't get me wrong. It's it's because no one ever looked across a crowded Smokeville bar and went, "Oh yeah, that guy." No, it's <laughs> not, not, not once it's ever happened. Oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> Listen, it, it works in reverse too, though, because I've I've definitely worked next to some eights and nines, tens. Oh, then you get like, to know them, and you want to really kill. gorgeous people. Yeah. And then, yeah, you get to know him and you hear him talk and you're like, I can't stand the sound of your voice. I need you to get like 12 feet away from me. You're annoying as hell. You know, like, <laughs> I, need, I need you to social, be socially distant before it's you've gone, yeah. you've gone down to a four because of your personality. Social distance from my social distance. Should I right. tell you guys this my story? Of, yeah, do it. Okay, so I um, worked at this little restaurant where I was a server and I dated one of the cooks like for a really long time. Back of the house. That's yeah, the back of the house, house, front of the house. The whole front of the house, back of the house thing. Oh yeah. And we dated for a long time and eventually I ended up breaking up with him and, um, but I still had to work with him. Yeah. And so I would go into the back to like grab my food and he would be like, slut. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And, like, and the owner works there, too, and would say nothing. And then well, he'd be like, is it because you were, was it because you were be sleeping like, with the owner? No, not at oh. all. I wasn't. No, I wasn't. It was just he was mad that I actually was like kind of moving on and he wasn't ready to move on. And he just being a dick was just, sometimes that happens. He People was just dicks. an awful person. Why are these green beans on a side plate and why do they spell fuck you whore? I, I don't right. know. Right. Fuck that. you whore. Right. <laughs> but I was then, like, it's joking. so funny though, too, because this happened obviously like way before me, too. Like way before me, too movement and i was like man that was a super hostile environment like yeah. that's not okay to do to somebody and like no. that's no. not okay for the person who owns the restaurant to know that that's happening and just kind oh, of condone it. it and and that's yeah. what happened it was just condoned and it was just kind of like Lindsay, you deal with it like you broke up with him and you broke his heart. <laughs> That's not fair. And I, I like didn't that. I didn't cheat on him. I didn't do anything. I it just didn't, it didn't I mean literally I here's you want to know what happened. I broke up with him because he kept saying that I gained weight. Rude. And don't say that. So <laughs> I had I <laughs> on the I'm list of, dancer right now. On the list of things right. that you she never said, ever like, ever right. say to a woman, <laughs> that's like three. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. Right. But he kept like talking about all this weight that I had gained and like all this stuff. And I was just like, finally it came to a point where I was like, I've had enough. Like I'm done. Like you don't get to make me feel like this. That's not okay. And then when I did break up with him, that was when it all started, where it was like slut, whore. So he sounds like, like, like a this. he sounds like a, a bad choice in uh, in somebody to date. But like, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, Remy is like he always played like the game where he was the good guy. 
Sure. So, like, in front of everyone else, he was like, this amazing guy. He's so cool. And he's so much fun. And it wasn't until, like, it was behind closed doors or we were working together that yeah. he started showing his true colors. But everyone was always like, oh, my God, why didn't you end up with him? He's so great. And I was like, you don't he's know awesome. him. Like, yeah. he is right. playing this <laughs> On a very special <laughs> lifetime. And manipulative. And that's the, real, and that's the, the thing that, even, right. Even just, like I've seen people have like very like short lived relationships in the back and it's like, you know, people will have issues, but sometimes like they have a really good experience, like working with their like exes. Sure. It's cool. But, yep. you know, I would say that nine times out of 10, it's not. So you probably yeah. should just not date your coworker. Well, One, and that was no, nine, it's, it's nine, not nine, not dating 19 you. year old me, lesson it's, learned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, something young, it's something that young people always fall victim to. It seems yeah. like we all make our mistakes and we make our bed lie. And here's the thing. You can, you can date somebody you work with. If it ends badly, one of you has to go. No, you can't sure, both sure. work there anymore. I get like, that, but usually you that works decide. itself out. There's somebody that's exactly. like willing to quit. So it's yeah. like, okay, fine. They were already on their way out. Your problem lies when it's like two people that have been there for a very long time. And what's so crazy too is like, yeah. I remember we went to like a coworker's birthday party and he just ended up happening to go and he like followed me out into the parking lot and he just started like crying and he was like get back together with me and i was like no <laughs> dude like you have not after you do you, that you Sorry. have been straight up awful to me there is right. no way like this is not okay this is not okay you don't you don't treat a woman like that and 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 to what you were saying is it was my first experience in a restaurant and so i had no idea that uh -huh. like this is how things work but it and is, this though. is what and this is what happened and it's weird that like we even have to think that that's how it is yeah. but that's like a reality of it like i yeah. always knew going into any place that i worked at that like like sexually charged conversation and sexual harassment and stuff like that is gonna happen. Yeah, I had no and, idea. And like you just like girls just go, it's fine, you know? Yeah. So, well there's there's different ways to deal with it. I know I know plenty of people I know plenty of women fine. in the industry who like <laughs> play the fine. game. This and is they fine, I'm fine. Like, yeah. House is burning down. Right. This and they're is like, fine. It's, I'm and fine. they're like, it's fine, this is great. Like, you know, I'll let you sexually harass me and talk about whatever. And then there's there's other girls who stand up and be like, at da, 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 da. there's a line, oh, yeah. you just crossed it, fuck off, you know. There's and, always like, one girl that, that is like the fucking she's the bitch. She's just like, no nope, motherfucker. Not even a like, bitch, just like tough about it and no, like she knows she like, knows where her boundaries are, yeah. I just mean like she's the bitch, like she's the bitch, like she's the one. Yeah, because that's what everybody else calls her, yeah. Right, she's a bitch. Right. Everyone's gonna be having it. Like she's just like she doesn't. Stand everyone for loves it. her. Everyone feels the same way about her. She's always like the best fucking right. girl there, and they just are like, you don't fuck around with her. The right? bad bitch. She stands yes. up for herself, and she does the thing, and she goes, "I'm the bad right. bitch. Like yep. I'm the fucking one." So, so I've dated that one before. <laughs> totally what was that dated like? the bad bitch. Yeah, totally, totally dated her. She was like, "I don't take shit from nobody," and like you know. I'll be cool with everybody, but there's a line that you don't cross, and and that's it. It was cool. Well, she was a. See, she was I would have if I would have stayed in the restaurant business, I would have been the bad bitch. Yeah. But I that was my first experience. That was like my first like baptism. I think right. that into some people are really shitty. <laughs> and I think some people are really awful and I didn't know like I was so naive like I had no idea that like people were so like brutal I had no idea until that experience and then after that I was like okay now I'm the bad bitch like now try you know what I mean like it takes you don't become the bad bitch right you don't forever. come you right exactly Remy like you don't just become that no. on your first no that doesn't happen exactly that's the thing is that like <laughs> With you me, learned. like, I feel like when I first started bartending, I was like, I let people treat me however, and I didn't really stand up for myself, and I didn't really, like, do anything, and now it's like I go into place, and I'm just like, listen, there's gonna be me or you type situation, and I'm telling you right now, they're not getting rid of me, so... 
That only leaves one other choice. Maybe, right. maybe <laughs> try and be out. on my side right. instead of against right. me because they're going to ask me what I think. Right. And I'm, I'm going to tell them to get rid of your ass. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. People, and let's see who they believe. And when you're like a good bartender like that, Remy, you know, they come know. to you and they ask you, like, oh, yeah. right. what do you think of new person number one? <laughs> And you're like, oh yeah, new new person number one is cool, but you know, new person right. number ten was even cooler, you know. Oh, yeah. When the manager the or the owner like grabs you around the shoulder and pulls you aside, is like, so how are they working out? I've been here and right. stuff, you know. And you're like, uh, yeah, no, 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 give them some more time. They're just easing their way in. Or yeah, this one's a fucking four alarm fire. Like, get rid of them before the shit hits the fan. <laughs> Please do yeah. us all a favor. Just cut your losses and let's move right. on. Yeah. Just get oh, rid of them God. quickly, please. So, but speaking of douchebag owners, so I was working at a place one time, and owner was banging one of the waitresses, and she was at least 25 years younger, right? So just typical bar owner thing, and he wasn't oh, married or anything. Owner. He wasn't, he was single, so hey, like, free to sure, do whatever sure. you want. But I'm like, if you're the owner, and you start banging one of the waitresses, don't let her work for you anymore. Be like, go work somewhere else. We can date now. Like, they were boyfriend and girlfriend, basically. But, like, don't keep working there. Because she told all of her friends at the bar. They told everybody. Big rumors flying around. And then and they told two friends. It. And so on. Yeah. And so on. And so on. And then he's, he's denying it. And it's like, dude, like, she's telling everybody. Her friends are telling everybody. Everybody knows it. It's like. Yeah, if you, you tell can't... one person, yes. there's at least 20 others that know exactly so it's like you want to have your cake and eat it too that's fine man just get her another so job speak. somewhere else like why, so why are you letting her work for you still that's just so dumb like, agreed just have a girlfriend instead so, like, you can afford it <laughs> um i worked for this guy in chicago and he had a lot of money. He had several different restaurants. He was in with like the Blackhawks. Um, like he was, Don't he was like part. Different. Yeah, no, he was <laughs> he was partying with Blackhawks and all that. And he decided, okay, so when I started working at his restaurant, we all wore. I was a server at the time. We all wore white button up, long sleeve shirts with a tie like olive garden style and it slowly devolved into us wearing booty shorts nylons with like this like zip up little Corset. jacket where our boobs were just like pushing together <laughs> And we had to pay for it, like on our own. We had to pay for Sounds it. Sounds like a strip club, Lindsay. It was awful. Right. <laughs> but he would like, so like when we first like started going to these un these uniforms, he would like be like, his all of his friends would be like at a high top, and he would like have me like come over. This is when I was like hot and young, and he would be like, he'd be like, yeah, she's gonna be in one of those uniforms. Like she's gonna look super hot before just, like bro before you like switched yeah over? before we did the whole oh switch, my God, like no. through the whole thing and we had to pay for this this uniform was like 160 dollars yeah. because they were all like custom made like booty mm -hmm. shorts like all of that like it came out of our paycheck each week where we had to pay for it and like none of the guys any of the guys that he had working for him like he did have guy servers and none of the guys, they just kept getting to wear black pants and a black shirt. I mean, but I would have worn booty shorts. But all, of the, women, all, but all of the women, but all of the women had to pay for like this custom, like get up that he wanted us okay. to be in. I do. So wait, 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 listen. So this is great. Be Look at is that Remy's something. butt? <laughs> <laughs> Remy, you got a cute butt. I thank you. I know. See, <laughs> I would have been all about the booty shorts. I've been so like, listen, that's what they're so, wearing, that's what I'm wearing too. Let me ask you a question. Let me pause so, your story for a second. Okay. I need to interject. Okay. Because you're you're saying this as if yeah. you're complaining about it. And I and I get that how it seems like it's not a cool thing. But you didn't have to keep working there. And did you make good money wearing booty shorts and no. push up? 
No. no. Well, then no. I would no. have gone somewhere else. Because no, 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 we no, 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 were, no. I'm we, no, it, if a place it literally did, did nothing to want. add to my tips. If anything, it brought my tips down. Then, so because you move on. where we were was in a suburb. So, yeah, you move on. And you just say, you just say, this isn't the place for me. You want but me to Remy, do all these things. But is like, that fair that a woman should have to find a new job because you decided to switch your uniform to something completely sexist? No, but that's not the no. kind of person. No, don't, hold on a second. No. No, don't just dismiss me. Don't just dismiss me. But I'm just telling you, no, that's not. I okay. understand what you're telling me. I understand your point of the story. My point of the story is that's not the kind of person you should want to work for, anyways. So sure. okay. absolutely yeah. not. But at the same time, his managers were amazing. My coworkers were amazing. My clientele was amazing like I had people coming in that were like I want to be seated in Lindsay's section and eventually when I was a bartender I'm gonna go sit at Lindsay's bar because it was two separate bars in the restaurant so I'm gonna go sit at Lindsay's bar and I just don't think that's fair I don't think that's right that like I should have to like you shouldn't, and it's Pay not. I'm not just something like that. I'm so, not justifying I'm gonna, what they did in any kind of way. No, no, no. So let me let me just give an example. Okay, so I worked at a strip club, so it's expected. Like I already knew that that was going to be like something similar to what we would have to wear, um, and we had to wear like a corset kind of thing with like a bra underneath, obviously, because it was like a half corset, and then you know like a pair of panties that say Trumps over the back of them, and like even for that like i was just like this is crazy but i also knew what i was gonna be wearing going into it so yeah, it's not I like it changed up on you i'm sorry i said so, yeah it's not like it changed exactly. up on you you knew no, that walking i wasn't in, yeah. surprised i knew what i was gonna wear but if i started working at a place and then they changed it up on me like they were like you wear a button down thing with black right. slacks and then they change it into me booty like shorts. booty shorts and stuff. Right. I would be like, what the fuck? Right. And I agree with you, Remy, too, where it's like, you don't have to stay. Like, you can always move on to another place. But at the same time, it's just like, did they, like, did they sell or something? Like, no, they didn't sell. If it didn't sell and, like, they just decided that they were going to, like, switch over to something else, like, they should have been forthcoming with the girls and been like, hey, this is what we're doing And now. pay for it for them. Because Why I, do I have to pay I did have to pay for my for uniform at the strip club. But, like I said, again, I knew that I was going to have to do that. It's $500 to buy into a strip club. Like, yep. you literally have to pay you know, $200 for your dancer's card, which is just a cabaret license. It only lasts for one year and expires on your birthday, no matter when you got it. Right. So it's like, you have to go do that. And then you have a, a, a fucking uh, uniform that's $160. Right. And these girls are like paying out of pocket and for that. And not only that, we were paying for nylons. And, and nylons, nylons, yeah, run. we did have to pay for the nylons. So too. every they two were days, every two days, we were paying for a new set of nylons. Capigios. And if you, if anybody knows anything about dancing, capigios are like the most expensive fucking nylons. Dude. I mean, it, I'm, I'm assuming they're Italian, which usually means expensive, so. They are $25 a pair, or you could go to CVS and get two pairs for five bucks. You right. Know? Yeah. But, it's but like, you had to keep getting them because they kept running. They run, and you're, once, you're, right. once they run, you get in trouble. And, that's what, and they that's make what you we would it. get in trouble if they were running. Because they were turning you into a strip club, girl. Not a strip club, but like a double X club. You but know? I like, was not hired in under that pretense. So right. why should I have to? You shouldn't, but my whole point is that, like, you're, you're complaining about it, which is fine. You have every right to be pissed about it and stuff like sure. that. You can't, you can't go up against that system. They own the bar. They can do whatever they want. Right. It's it. like once and they start doing the thing, you just them? have to decide yeah. whether or not you want to be part you're of it. Exactly. You just gotta go oh, but the your... system is under, just so you know. You just and gotta... also, uh, there was a bartender there that was pregnant, and he fired her for being pregnant. So yeah. she had a huge well, lawsuit. Well, High School huge gets rid of people and puts them into him. fucking, you know, yeah, whatever school, night school, yeah. if you're pregnant. You know what I mean? It's like, they have, like, ways to get around that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, they're, it's like right to work. You know what I mean? It's like, they can fire you for whatever reason. For 
any reason they think they can think of. That's the at, that's the at will yeah. state of law. I mean, at hey, will, exactly. I, 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 at I, will. I, I don't at like will the shirt you're wearing today. Get out. They can do like whatever you, they want to you. It doesn't matter yeah. what you think or what you say <laughs> or what's happening to you. You can be abused, right. and it doesn't matter. At will employment is a thing. Right. Uh, and again, the reason that these kind of restaurant owners and managers have gotten away with changing the rules and making them up as they go along and do whatever the fuck they want, basically, is that we're not unionized. Because if you were unionized, all of your gripes would be sat down in front of somebody and been like, well, they can't do that. I'm well, all no, for unionizing. Oh, yeah. That, all, everything that you just mentioned was all stuff that like a union would protect you against. But right. people don't want to join a union for the restaurant industry. And you know, look what's that happened to the whole to industry we during should, this pandemic. We should have unions it's, for every. Well, is, look at the, look what's happened during the pandemic. It's completely decimated the entire industry. We're all left out on our asses without jobs or risking our lives to go to work or whatever the fuck else is going on with that stuff. And this is where a union would have come in and they'd been like, all right, you guys are all going to, like, the government's going to take care of all these people. We've got the money set aside for all these people. That's what unions do. They organize yeah. all that shit. People like look at them give as you some money. organizations, but it's like if you keep them on the straight and narrow, the servers and restaurant people and bartenders in this country would have been taken care of during the pandemic. I feel like we should be unionizing. Right. It really, it's yeah. that's like something that I think is a real thing. And like, ten years, ago, I understand actually. the reasons why people wouldn't want to, but at the same time, I'm just like, guys, like when stuff like this happens, that's exactly why we would have a union. Yep. You know, like. We're in a situation right now where a lot of us don't know what the fuck we're going to do. The entire thing with Trump saying that he's going to give $400, like, that's only if our governor decides to give the 25%. And we already know that we're in a deficit. We're not going to get that money. It's not going to yep. happen. Well, and yeah, let's just say... <laughs> I, I did love that, is that he, you know, goes on TV and says, oh, yeah, no, I signed an executive order that'll give everybody, you know, $400 and extend it. No, no, that's not really what you did is, is nope. put in place an order that said the states have to figure out how to do it. If they yeah. can do that. Exactly. Yeah, I but was like, all that's of not his fair. followers are such sheep and they're like, oh, oh yeah. he's trying to do something. But people he's read headlines. That's it's a ploy. It's a ploy to like get people to vote for him. And like, you know, if, if that's what you believe in, like. You know, I can't really change your mind at this point. Like, we've all decided that this is what we're doing and and, and that's what you're doing. But right. the way that I feel about it is I'm just like, I see what he's saying. He's saying that he's going to stop all the taxes on this stuff. Those taxes are feeding into our Social Security and right. Medicaid. Right. What the fuck is my grandma going to do when she doesn't have Social Security or Medicaid anymore? Like, what is going to happen with her? He's saying, oh, I'm going to forgive it if you vote me in. And it's just like, first and of all, get rid of it. let's just say that that was a, a viable option. Let's just say it was. Then why are you saying that only if you vote me back in will I help you? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Why are you doing that? You should be my president. You should. Be I'd like to point out this isn't, this isn't actually technically a tangent because, uh, because of all this, you are still getting fucked at work. So... Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, right. Or actually, not at work. I, I guess. It's not like we raise the unemployment or the the uh, you know minimum rate, you know, to like an actual livable wage or something. Like this is insane to me that this is all happening. And like all my friends are like, "Oh, look what happened! Look what happened!" And I'm just like, even if that was the case, even if we got the four hundred dollars every week, how long would it take to implement that? How long is it going right. to take for these people to start receiving their money? It's not tomorrow, guys. It's right. not today. All the people that certified today, it's not today. It wasn't right. last week. It's not going to be next is week. Is it going to happen before you're evicted? Right. It's insane. I, sorry, I, go on a rant. Sorry, I, go on a rant. Sorry, I on a seriously rant. feel so sorry for, like, all the people that work in bars that, like, aren't able to work. Like, it's it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Well, I mean, and you're, and you're, I've you're been really lucky. Or don't feel comfortable going back. I mean, that's right. The, the, the both both. Right, and it's not because I'm lazy. Like right. I'm oh. not lazy. I'm about to go to school anyway. It's not oh. because I'm lazy. Believe and everything me. to do with the fact that I don't feel comfortable going back to work. Yeah. I loved my last bartending job. I would have been so happy. Like you know, had this pandemic never hit, I I would have been chugging along there. I'm Same. sure it would have been great. Thing. I was moving up in my last bartending job. 
Well, I mean, and, and that's, you know, there's a double whammy there too, you know, just, you know, talking about the executive orders and that kind of stuff, you know, one of the things that he, you know, they're, they're really trying to push through. And one of the sticking points is the removal of um, any and all liability uh, for companies and business. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. in case they don't want anybody COVID. suing their employees. Oh yeah. So, and, and that's the thing, you know, you look at like, okay, if major league baseball, which basically has unlimited money, yes, keep right, players yes. from having yes. outbreaks, how in the hell is, you know, Joe's corner dive bar, you know, going to keep their people that. safe? Like I, well, and we, and dude, we've seen it. I mean, you know, how many times have there been, you know, Facebook posts or whatever from local dot, you know, local bars or whatever else. Hey, yeah, we're closed for the next four days or, Hey, you know, somebody pop positive, yeah. go get yourself checked, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, I mean, it's, it's a real issue. And like, I will say that I, I'm not going to say what I do, but I will say that I work in an area and they're super afraid about going back to work and they've been asking us to like write letters and to protest and to strike because, and one of the things was that we brought up was like, if even the MLB and the NFL, because we saw what happened with Matt Stafford, where it was like negative, negative, positive, positive just negative, kidding, negative. false positive. I was like, even like something like that, where they have unlimited resources, mm -hmm. if they can't keep it under check, how the hell is the rest of the world supposed to keep it under check? Yeah, we're not. There's not a. There's no way. Short answer is we're not. You know? Right. They, they don't really fucking care. <clears throat> it doesn't matter to like the higher ups how many of us peon workers that are like struggling to survive die from this or not. It doesn't. Yeah, but I'm not down for that. Like, I am. I, I don't I think am, any of us are. <laughs> no, but I am like, I am actively like protesting against that. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, you know, and I, just, you know, I look at it even from my little, the little microcosm of my world. Like, I'm, I'm not throwing engineers at shows yet. You know, when I, when I, right. you know, when we have shows that want to run in studio, I'm running them. Yeah. You know, because I'm yeah. just, I'm not ready to you know i'm not ready to have somebody else assume that risk yet yeah i mean dave how many times have we asked you like when can we get in studio and you're just not ready for it and i appreciate that about you that you're like we're just not there yet like well, we I, just I, can't I told you if you want to come downtown we have times available uh, they just don't they just don't uh, match up with throw ours that out, throw that they don't me. match up with ours but it's like we can't go to the studio we want no, to but go I'm to just saying, like we can't like no but what i was saying is like you have been very very um cautious yeah about sure. sending anybody back into the studio mm -hmm. like you have been very very cautious about it and i appreciate that like i don't think all employers are doing the same thing no you know where they're looking at it like hey we could lose a person mm -hmm. we could lose a person and right you know a lot of employers are like yeah we can lose a person oh well, you know it's, it's like gm with the amc pacer it, it, it's cheaper yeah. to pay off the lawsuits than it is to actually fix the damn car it's you know right right <laughs> right right <laughs> exactly <laughs> for sure Risk assessment management. Exactly. Uh, right. Yes. Are you drinking Jaeger or Yeji? Yes. Yeji and Mountain Dew. Jeez, oh, Pete. <laughs> or as Jesus. I like to call it. I don't it, know how yeah. you do that. That's it's just a, so it's, weird. It's a doujie. Yeah, clearly. It's a doujie. Right. Remy? It's, it's no, super Dave. good. Dave. Wait, Dave, what are you drinking? It's Yeji. A the the Yezhinovka, the blackberry brandy, the super Polish strong stuff. You would know this Literally. if you came out the other night. Oh, uh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm the worst. <laughs> and I'm now the we've, worst. And now we've touched on home Next around time, network, Dave. politics, guilt trip. Right. No, so it's all. that mixed with uh, Mountain Dew. Because, I, mean, so, I mean, it's blackberry brandy and basically a citrus soda. I mean, it's, it's a good combination. A doozy. I, I call it a doozy. It's a doozy. It's a doozy. That's a doozy. All right. Um, I actually, I, I was that, I was that douchebag. Speaking of doozies, I was a douchebag one time. I was working at a, at a head shop um, when I was 21 
selling like t-shirts and bongs and stuff like that. And I started dating one of the girls there. And then a new girl started working and we were all out at the bar one night playing pool. And I was being like extra flirty with this new girl. And yeah, the girl that I was dating. I'm so like, shocked, Remy. Gave me like the slap in the face and you know, you broke my heart and stuff. I'm sorry, Mary Ellen. I'm sorry. Mary you Ellen. Remy, you're such Mary. a heartbreaker. I'm I sorry, was, Mary Ellen. She was a sweet girl too. I mean, Mary, like, Mary Ellen, Ellen, that just sounds like it the really most was. wholesome girl's name in the world. I mean, like it sounds like Gilligan's Island. What's her name? Yes. Marianne. 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 Marianne is such a. She was. She definitely had a girl next door vibe. She wasn't like a perfect. And you broke her fucking heart. Like and you I broke her heart. I was 21. I was, you know, I was living in a new city for the first time in my life. I had my first apartment out there. Like I was young and dumb. And this well, new girl, the new girl caught my fancy, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know? I know, and I had a little bit for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, oh, jeez. Ah. Y'all are crazy. Like the 13 crazy. comments that immediately come to mind, and I'm like, nope, 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 no. nope, nope. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Lindsay says that it. Was. But no, and the moral of that story and the lesson learned was that the, the new girl, I never even ended up hooking up with her. You know, I was like, I was just being a little bit drunk and flirty. But you but... should have hung out with freaking Mary Ellen. I should have. Cool. Mary Ellen was Sometimes the grass is door. greener because it's over the septic tank. <laughs> no, honestly, <laughs> honestly, it was fine because like six <laughs> months, <laughs> six months later, I met a girl and we ended up going out for like two and a half, three years. And I had a really great relationship with her. So uh, there you go. that's the moral of that. It story. all works. Hey, I, you know, we started this show off with me throwing some people under the bus. I didn't say their names, but I, you know, was telling their telling their dirty laundry stories. I'm well, like, I'm I not, threw a bunch I'm of people under innocent. the bus, and let me tell you to this day, he's still a douchebag. So, well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like, she goes, I threw a bunch of people under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Just one, still a douchebag. <laughs> two people, two people. But that's a, that's another good another good point about me too is not just like you know I made the mistake and I broke Mary Ellen's heart but like other times in my life I I always I'm the serial I'm dater at work I'm always looking to hook up with somebody that I work with like right <laughs> yeah well not anymore now I work I was with like so you're just so. looking for bullshit <laughs> to happen is what you're saying like that's <laughs> no I'm, you know it's like I I find. I find that when I'm working with a female and then I become attracted to her, it's like, it just makes sense because we're spending most of our time together anyways. Yeah. That's where I tend to find my relationships. Is that work? I mean, you like I like respect that. a girl who already has a relationship though. I do. Yeah, but I understand like if you're hanging out with someone for a really long time, it's just yeah. natural. Yeah, like if you spend start. most of your time with them, then I guess it makes sense. But understanding like, that for me, they have like, a cool sense of humor. I never really experienced that much because I work at nightclubs. So it's like I either Oh spend, yeah, it's fast. Yeah, it's like Friday, Saturday it's night fast. for five hours each night and it's like I might talk to you for like all of, you know, one hour Two for seconds. setting up and cleaning, you know. Yeah. Well, no, the the reason reason I'm asking you the most I sat or the most that I hung out with was Darude. Yeah, Darude. (laughs) Darude. And it was because the sandstorm guy. And it was the sandstorm guy. And it was because there was a huge blizzard that night in Detroit. And so it was so funny because we just kept yelling, play sandstorm. Play sandstorm. And it was a blizzard outside, literally a blizzard outside. And he ended up hanging out like for a long time. And he was like the nicest dude. Like he was super cool. Like talking to all of us bartenders, like a really cool guy. But it was just so funny because the whole night I was like the biggest asshole in the back. Like Freebird. <laughs> and like, I'm sure he just kept looking over at me at the bar. Like you're so would, would, would someone please You're shut that girl up? Yeah. Somebody get her. this girl out of here. And I wasn't no, even my whole drunk. Thing, That's the same thing I was like bartending. Somebody... So I was like, 
stone cold sober. And My I was whole just thing like, was like yeah, somebody, so... somebody buys this chick like 10 shots so that she passes out, <laughs> like throws up and goes home. Well, yeah, but no, so what I was going to say is, you yeah, know, I mean, drunk now. The, whole work, the whole work thing, like the whole work wife, work <laughs> husband thing. I mean, yeah. that's, dude, that's prevalent in any. Oh, industry. that's so true. The work wife, work husband thing. For yeah, sure. that's true. She's my, you work I mean, you're spending, you're like, my work wife. She was my work wife. Nice. For sure. Like in a, in, a, in a typical job, especially like in an office environment, I mean, you're around somebody for eight hours a day, you know, and then you're going out for drinks after work or, you know, not, yep. whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, that, it happens. Yes, it does happen. Well, and also in the bars, like, everybody's trying to look their best, the guys and the girls, you know, it's like guys trying, they've got like their do done and they're wearing sharp clothes most of the time, unless you work at a place where like the outfits are dusty and shitty, but no, most of the places that I've worked at, you know, the girls are all dressed up in skin tight outfits. Right, 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 yeah. And stuff like I was that. wearing booty shorts half the night. Yeah, so. see, like no wonder that cook wanted to fucking there you go. <laughs> take you out and buy you tacos every night. And then he bitched <laughs> that you for getting fat. Like, what a jerk. We worked at a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, of course you did, you know. Yeah, I, I'd like, stop gaining weight if you'd stop cooking for me, asshole. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's right. complaining about you right. getting fat. It's like, motherfucker, you're Quit making Quit feeding me tacos, asshole. Right? And, you know and more to the tell. point, since when are you complaining about what I put in my mouth? Like, what? Uh, <laughs> right. That's exactly. Right. Exactly. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. See, I was never back at the house, so I never got to play that game. Like, hey, girl, you hungry? I can hook you up. Yo, what's up? I got but some as, tacos. <laughs> as the bartender, I definitely got to, like, hook girls up with drinks. That that definitely, uh, that definitely got me laid more than once. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, you know. It's like just the way. It I mean, goes. that's that's one of the perks of being the bar. I'd seen like, and that's the thing, like that. And I've had this conversation before. Like, that's one of the reasons why I hate, with a passion, the word mixologist. Oh my yeah. god! Because like to Ew. Me, that's like Ew. that's ten, that's ten percent of what being a bartender is. Like, okay, oh great. You, like you know how to mix craft cocktails or whatever. That's cute. But can you run a bar? Can you engage with patrons? Can you right. can you right. read? Because like I've always right. I've always said like and it's got especially in the IT industry, I always I'm like dude like go be a bartender go be something for like just six months, yeah le- like to learn how to read people to like and you know what's so crazy it. too is like I've always said like I'm always like you need to go work in the service industry like there's so many like kids that I see all the time not telling you what I do for a living but there's just like I just believe you, that I don't give a shit you need to go like understand no, what it like, was like yeah I just believe like that should be part of our like high school curriculum like you have to go work what do you in... tip somebody when you're doing no when... just just in the service industry like yeah. you have to go work with the public and whether that is serving you whether need more that than, is you need like back, a year whether, of that shit. right like you just like that should just be standard across the board you have to go work with the public and you have to go see what the general public is like just to introduce new yourself flash. they're shitty <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. right. New, right. Horrible. Newsflash, you're gonna hate it. Like, I know, right? Like, you're gonna wanna die. You're gonna. There's right. good points about it, too. On that note, I need some whiskey. So I'm gonna get some whiskey. No, but I just. Speaking think of, so I am, I, I am currently taking suggestions. Yeah. For your booze? Jägermeister. Are we. Are we oh, here? he got his uh, base whiskey. 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 Oh, we're doing wine though. Okay, so it's wine. Wait, are we doing it or Wait, what? Let's cheers it. Hello. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. So the suggestion. So that is a today is the. So it's finally like yeah, I just got it a couple days ago, and you have to cure it for the first like three to five days. Like you have to put hot water in it, and let the water expand, and all that stuff. So what the fuck, Dave? So it's finally all sealed now. So now I have to figure out which five liters I'm going to put in there. So what are you what are you taking a shot of right now? Right. Sh- what are we doing a shot of right now? Come on. <laughs> Look at his cute little jersey. He always Those are 84. He always has cute. Jersey. I know he does, but I love it. It's exceptionally <laughs> cute. You're so cute, Dave. I like gifts. 
are you the gatekeeper? <laughs> I'm the key master. Always. The gatekeeper. All right. All right. What are you drinking? Dog. Remy, what do you have? And then Dave, what do you have? And then Lindsay and I will say what we have. I got a little whiskey here. Oh, old Forester. Old Forester okay. whiskey. Okay. 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 What about you, Dave? Uh, I went with a uh, peanut butter and jelly. Hey! Oh, my gosh, Everyone we have to love the peanut butter and jelly. I know, I wish. Damn it. Lots All right, we have some wine. wine. We have wine. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Like, we always Say have cheers. wine. Cheers. Love you. It's good stuff. God, I love those. Okay, it's I it. like mine with cream, though. No, I just love I mean... straight up. <laughs> oh, screwball. Wait, are we still screwball. doing phrasing? Are we? Screwball. Yeah, oh, yeah we're still doing phrasing for sure. Screwball phrasing. whiskey is my favorite. Screwball. Well, and I, 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 I really like cream though. I really do. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I do. No, I just love straight up screwball whiskey. See, or... I can't, I can't stand it straight. I like so that was the problem is somebody gave me two bottles of it and I tried it. Oh, get it. I was like, cold. do you was yeah, like, do you so shake good. it? Ice cold. Because oh, no, shaking I, I, is amazing. I tried everything with it straight and I just with didn't like it. Yeah, and you not, still hated it? Okay. Shambord I like, and cream. I like, I like whiskey flavored whiskey. I, I like board <laughs> and cream. Oh, you're such a snob, Dave. No, no, no. So, I but, like I just, but I just used whiskey. it in but I just used that I just used it in that. Because like dude, okay. I got like I had like 13, 14, I don't know, 20 flavored vodkas behind me. Oh, okay. wait, I forgot how cool your house was that we were never invited over to. <laughs> so wait, first of all, that's not true either. Oh, I don't wait. know where you're going with this. <laughs> I did I wasn't invited over to Dave's yep, house. On fourth of July. I'm pretty sure that's sure. because you never actually oh, joined the chat. You never joined the chats. That's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, so I use the no, so it's screwball, and then either uh, so I'm I'm currently waffling between uh, either Chambord uh, or McGillicuddy's grape to be the jelly. Um, they're they're both equally good. Um, yeah, I don't know about a cream float in it though. I'd have Can to check I tell it you out. something? No, not a cream float. Check it out. Do your screwball. Do a little bit of Chambord or whatever the fuck you're gonna do. Do just like a splash of cream. And then a splash, I mean like a half a splash of like Frangelico. A and it is fucking amazing. <laughs> You're going to want to have a million of them. Isn't please. the Frangelico redundant with the Chambord though? It, no, no, it's like Hazelnut. because it's a little bit sweeter. So if you just drop a, like a, just the tiniest of like literally just like a bloop, okay. just like a little blooper. It yeah, makes French it just the nice amount of sweetness that it almost tastes like. I would say it kind of tastes like. Do you know what um, uh, Cherry Garcia ice cream yeah. tastes like? Identical. Ooh, Cherry Garcia. Interesting. Melted down, okay. directly down your throat. Delicious. So good. So listen, Chambord is like your your syrupy berry, kind of like the jelly. Berry, flavor. yeah. Right. But the Frangelico is hazelnut. Hazelnut. So that's gonna, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm butter and hazelnut. Like and jelly. But it's but it's still got that cream. like but, flavor to it that if a, you just do a little bit, but a, a little bit. But a classic peanut butter and jelly shot is uh Frangelico. Uh, Chambord mm -hmm. and just shake it up. Yep, that's, that's a exactly class. That that's a classic PB and J shot. Shake and it's it up. So good. It's so good. You know what else is good? Straight whiskey from the bottle. I also mean, yeah. But if you have two um, hot girls that sidle up next to your bar and they're like, "Give me something fruity. I want something fruity. I want something." I'm gonna give them. You can be like, oh, I'll give them Randy's phone number. now I know what to make them. <laughs> I'm going to do Chambord with a little bit of Frangelico, and I'm going to shake it up. Shake it up. And it's going to feel real nice. And it's going to taste like a PB&J. When, when, when guys ask me for, like, shots of, like, anything, like, whiskey, and there's girls that are like, I'm not going to do a shot of whiskey. I always give them a shot of Jameson, or actually I prefer to do Maker's Mark, but I'll go for Jameson if I have to. And then a little bit of peach schnapps, cranberry, sour, and a splash of orange juice, and it is fucking great. For people that so don't uh, like whiskey. That's close to a green tea. Yeah, that is no. close to a green tea. Like that you've got, well, you have two extra ingredients. Yeah, but close. Oh, yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I just said. It's close. It's not, yeah. Close. Not the same, but it's, close. 
it makes it enough of, away from it that it doesn't even taste remotely like it. What I used to do at the bar in Chicago that I worked at, we did um, pancakes and orange juice. So we oh, did shot. Yep. Jameson and Frangelico in one shot that was like ice cold. And then we, I gave him a shot of orange juice on the side, and it was like a pancake and orange juice. Yep, breakfast yeah. shots. So good. I used to do so good. blueberry vodka, butterscotch schnapps, and drop it into orange juice, and that was a yep. blueberry <clears throat> pancake. Yeah. Blueberry pancakes. Oh, guys. So good. They're so or good. what? What? Oh, chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. I love chocolate cake. Chocolate shots. cake is Frangelico and Bacardi Limon. And then you have to have it with a, so it has good. to have so the good. sugared lemon though. It's yeah, gotta have it. Yeah. Otherwise the it's the only way it works. It's the only way it works. It doesn't work if you so just good. Do it. Science. You have the, Science. The sugar Science, everyone. Science. Taste buds. Taste buds. <laughs> Taste buds. <laughs> have you ever messed around with, oh, hey, God, we've gone so far off topic now, but have you, what is, is it the, um, the Akai berries? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that that change acai. that completely change your taste buds for a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, but the, I uh, haven't like, the, like thick just like juice that they were selling for a yeah. while. The Pura Veda stuff, yep. where it's like the extract and like you can cut it with some water or you can mix it up with cocktails and stuff like that. But it was yeah. like super concentrated, thick syrupy. It was really good though. Yeah, but it does fuck with your taste buds, changes them up, makes them feel weird. Al kooky and stuff, but yeah, no. But Bob used to, I, I, Bob used to come over whenever we would have like a party or something. Bob would openly mock um, all of my uh, all, all all of the fruity quote unquote gay vodkas uh, that I had, <laughs> uh, and then he would watch uh, over the course of the evening. To Lindsay's point, as as more and more girls would come up and be like, "I want that uh, something with that vodka in it or that vodka." Like yeah. and honestly, like one of my favorite things is always um, making blueberry pancakes with blueberry schnapps. Because, uh, oh yeah. Yes. Because the alcohol so cuts good. off and it just leaves the flavor and it's phenomenal. Yes. And can I just say, like, your bar is going to be centered around what the females want. It should be. Exactly. Like, that's a good bar. <laughs> exactly. That's a good bar is where they're like, they're catering to the female. No, no guy, no guy is coming and sitting in my basement. Right, going, hey, dude. One of those six bottles of Bailey's that you've got. Right, dudes will <laughs> come to any bar. Six Girls will come to some Bailey's. bars. Dudes will come to any bar. Girls will come to some bars. So if, if you can get the girls to come there, the dudes will come too. That's a thing. Like dudes will come to bars. We actually talked about this. Dudes will flock to where girls are going. The guy, um, we talked about this on our show, I think a week or two ago, the guy that shot the judge's family in New Jersey. Oh, uh, yes. So yes. He, he was a big, like, incel men's rights kind of guy kind oh of my attorney. god because he's a loser well, but he, so here's the deal he actually tried to file or and he did file class action lawsuits against any bar in new york hosting a ladies night uh because it was discriminatory <laughs> what okay, an well, asshole what an thing. asshole at my bar we here's did thing, we like, did one night that was a, a men's night because we were like we're not being discriminatory and we did a midnight too, up? but it was Tuesday. Yeah, it was gay night. <laughs> People always exactly. showed up, which is fine. Yeah, but here's the thing: is like just because it's the ladies' night doesn't mean that men can't come in. It just they're means just trying to get the girls in. right. They just want girls in flux. Dudes girls will come, come no matter in. what. Right, girls will not dudes, always come. Dudes will. That's follow. not true. That's not true. I faked an orgasm before. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but that dude will come no matter what. Oh, and I'm just here to god. tell you it's not true. I have faked it before. Um no, on on that note, I'd I say just you know, start like a biker style bar where it's like I this is just my bar and I'm doing whatever I want with it. And if the broads want to come and hang out because it's a cool biker bar, cool. But if not, we don't need it. <laughs> right. He man woman haters club. <laughs> He man woman haters. <laughs> South Park, no girls with the S backward allowed yeah. sign on the front door. Girls. Girls. Yeah. girls. Just me and the boys. And we're just gonna drink beer and talk about all kinds of dumb stuff and that's so oh, yeah. 
I've worked at like that that's so gross. I just don't I've understand like before. those incel guys. Like, where are your mothers? Where incel are your guys. sisters? I love it. Agreed. No, where I agree. are they? Well, here's, here's what the are thing. they doing? So here's the here's the thing. It's like you've got your really good looking guys that don't need to really do anything to go out and have all kinds of sex. Then you've got your charming guys and funny guys and stuff that may not be the best of the looks department, but they can hold their own. Yeah, and and they do just fine and stuff like that. You've got your mixes in between the two and stuff like that. <laughs> then you have your really weird, ugly, creepy guys that don't have anything interesting to say ever to anybody, and those are your insults. So it's like, you know, no, sorry honestly, about you, your luck, Here's fella. the sad thing. Like, I know there are guys that I know. I mean, let's be real. I run an IT networking group. There are... <laughs> There are guys that I know that aren't, that aren't bad looking guys, but they that have never spoken to a female in their life. I mean, like Bob and I have a running joke whenever somebody's going off about something, and it's usually a race to see which one of us is going to message the other one with it first with a screenshot. And along with the note of when was the last time someone touched your penis for free? Yeah, yeah for free. Like, that's the main thing. <laughs> Oh my god, Dude. that's terrible. Well, because I mean, like, that, like, that, whole, that, whole, like <laughs> that whole movement, that whole thing is just it's sick. It's, it's first sick. just the very name of it. Like, so you're 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 declaring yourself to be involuntarily celibate, right? right. Yeah, it's like, which means Why that don't you, you just believe tattoo that loser no, right no, 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 no. <laughs> you Dave, you're not right. a nice guy at all. It's actually. not involuntary. It's voluntary. <laughs> No, because I believe that all, no, no, I, I believe that all of them want to get laid. They, they just don't know. No, how. no, because they Incel have such means involuntary. But yeah. they have such a hate against women. It's like, how are, how do you ever expect to get laid? Oh, if like you if hate you say like you're the, the fucking like I'm I'm a nice guy thing, and it's just like I'm nice guy. All the things that the nice guy stands for is like these things that women do not fucking want, and it's just it's like true. no. Just nobody wants that shit. Like, hey, listen. Th some of the best advice I ever got was from watching Predator. And this guy over my shoulder <laughs> here was like, you need to start, check out his background. You need to you need to put a big plug of chew in because that stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. <laughs> nice. Well, but that's that's why I'm loving like all the controversy around uh, that new song WAP. Dude, it's. Uh, it's yeah. <laughs> Like, like everybody's like obsessed. Sorry, no. Okay, so Cardi B and Meg the Stallion. Um, oh, have that's why I know song. Know yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, have released this song, and it's like very, it's very so fun. good. It's, hy and it's hypersexual. Sure, it, it is. It's so good. And, like, all, like, and a lot of people are all up in arms about it. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, these women are far too sexual. And I'm like, guys, here are the songs from the '80s and '90s that I was in clubs trying to get laid to. Uh, right. Here's 20 Fingers featuring Gillette. Don't want no short dick man. Right. Uh, Don't want no short dick man. You gotta lick it before we kick it. You gotta yep. get it soft and wet so we can stick it. Uh, here's here's Oaktown 357. Juicy got him crazy. Here, you know. Oh, like, don't, okay, or how about salt and pepper? Like salt and pepper were like the epitome of like hyper sexualized females. Push it. Yeah. Push it. Push it real good. Okay, we've made it to the sex, end of our podcast. Sex is in all these songs. We have so, yeah, so uh, you've had uh, 58 minutes and uh, 13 topics. I, I think that might be a record. <laughs> <laughs> we ran the gamut One more topic. One more yep. topic. If you have anything to tell us about your time working in the service industry or hanging out in the service industry or just being anywhere near the service, we don't care. Anywhere near the service industry. You can be service industry adjacent. Like, literally, <laughs> just send us a fucking yeah, email. You could go to a restaurant. You could go to your local Chili's and be pissed off at your waiter. Send us an email. It is barsidetales at gmail.com. Please send us some shit. We would love to read it on the air and tell people about how much of a terrible time you're having. <laughs> Special shout out. Time too. <laughs> a special shout out to both of you who listened to this whole thing and you're Hi, listening Mom. to Hi, the Lorraine. Ad. <laughs> I can't believe you made it through all 13 topics. Uh, you're gonna win a prize someday. 
Hit us up. <laughs> if you email us, we'll give you a prize. I swear to God. <laughs> it, Thank you for it, it, it might be Remy sending you a dick pic. Yeah, Let's listen, listen. Better not be a dick pic. Do not be a dick pic because, because I will seriously. I have a I have a folder of dick pics that I just save them all you, into. And when you send me one, I send you all of them back. You so, you send those. I don't send dick pics. That's yeah, not. I will my do MO. it. I will do uh, it. I'm not some creepy incel. <laughs> I'm not doing it. It's all good. Anyways, I hope you guys had fun. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.